Hi, everyone. My name is John Cottrell, and this is Soft Flow. This is a 60-minute gentle yoga practice. And so for this class, you're going to need some props. And I brought in an extra prop, and I'll talk about that in a second. It's my chair over here, and I'll talk about how you're going to be able to use a chair for your practice. But a, but a Soft Flow class, the way that I've designed it, is a, is a class that moves slowly, gently. We don't do a whole lot of postures. And I take kind of common poses but give modifications and variations of the postures, which is one of the reasons why we're gonna have a chair. So let me show you what we're gonna be using for our class today. So we usually start in seated and you may wanna have a soft blanket, a folded blanket that you can use for sitting and kneeling. And then um, a couple of yoga blocks, if you, if you happen to have them, uh, yoga blocks or big books like dictionaries or even just two like soft pillows from your uh, sofa. And optional, a couple of optional things, a big pillow. This is a yoga bolster. It's nice and firm. Great for your Shavasana practice if you need a little extra support for your body. Um, but that's an optional piece to have. Another optional piece for this class today, we may not need it at all, but it's just a yoga strap. Again, you may not need it. I may not even turn to it, but just in case, okay? Because some of the work we're gonna be doing is gonna involve our legs and lengthening the hamstrings, okay? So that could come in handy. But here's the other piece. I have a chair here, which I'm gonna bring in just to show you. And you don't have to have a chair necessarily, but just something that you can use to help you balance. And that could be a wall, the side of a sofa, <laughs> a chair. It could be like if you have a high back chair, just the back end of a chair, or even just the seat of a chair, okay? Just something that you can lean against. Again, if you're near a wall, just use a wall. That'll work perfectly for this. All right, so I'm going to set my chair off to the side. I'm going to bring that in a little bit later. But we're going to start our soft flow yoga practice in seated. So I invite you to take a comfortable seat on your yoga mat or maybe folded blanket or pillow. You can cross your legs if you'd like. <clears throat> if that's uncomfortable for your hips or your knees, you can go ahead and extend your legs if you'd like. You can even sit in that chair if you're using a chair or even just sit with your legs extended out in front of you. You wanna sit up nice and tall. You just wanna feel that nice lengthening of your spine. Maybe start with a few deep breaths. You might breathe in through your nose and an exhale through your nose or through your mouth. <sighs> Maybe if you breathe out through your mouth, breathe out with a sigh. You might even feel your body relax. <sighs> a sense of calm and release and ease in your body. Good. Maybe a couple of breaths like that and then just turn to slow, gentle breaths in and out. You wanna keep your focus on your breathing. I just call this our breathing meditation, just taking time to, to settle in, prepare ourselves for our practice today. You can close your eyes if you'd like, or just soften your gaze. You might just gaze forward or just downward at the ground. And as we're settling into the space, I'll talk a little bit about our intention for our practice. So we're going to be working with some balancing today. Balancing. And I think it's always a good idea just to focus on balance at times when you may feel unbalanced, times we don't feel too grounded or maybe feeling a little unsteady. Now, balancing is a, certainly a challenge at times, especially in yoga, it can be a challenge, but it's a good practice when things do feel a little unsettling. Because if you can bring your body and mind to stillness, concentration, focus, those are the things that can help you feel more settled, just like in a balancing pose in yoga. One of the main poses we're gonna to do today is called half moon pose, half moon. So you could, you could be thinking about ways that you may be feeling a little unsteady, maybe a little off balance, 
maybe a situation in your life that's occurred recently. Maybe you just want to find some centering, some more focus and concentration. Go ahead and take three more breaths in and out as you sit in stillness, establishing your personal intention for your practice. I'm going to add a simple movement. So our moving meditation, a simple movement of our arms. So together we'll inhale, extend your arms out and all the way up into the air. Treat it like a nice stretch, reach high. Then exhale, extend your arms out and back down. That's our simple movement. And I'll just continue to give instructions here as we move. Again, another inhale, extending your arms out reaching all the way up, reaching high, and exhale, bring your arms back down by your side. Now go ahead and continue to breathe on your own and move at your own pace while I continue to give instruction. As you inhale, you wanna really reach out with effort, like you're gonna to touch the walls on either side of you and then eventually reaching up to touch the ceiling. So it's a big stretch. And the same thing as you exhale and bring your arms back down, imagine your fingertips touching the walls. Now, when we breathe in and feel the arms rise, we also wanna feel the breath rise. Fill up your lungs. And then exhale, bring your arms back down. Do that again. Your inhale, arms float up into the air. Good energy in your arms, hands and fingers, breath rising to fill up your lungs. And then your exhale. We're gonna add another sensation as we exhale in a moment. So the same breath in, extending, reaching high, breath rising. Now on the exhale, as the arms come down, you wanna feel your belly button pull in towards your spine. Keep moving and breathing. I'm just gonna demonstrate. So as you exhale, you wanna feel like your navel or belly button is pulling in towards your spine. So you feel this engagement in your belly. So it's just your abdominal muscles contracting, not too strongly, just feel that energy there in your center. That's gonna actually help us with our balancing work today. Let's take two more breaths. Finish the breath that you're on and then take two more, those nice extensions through your arms, energy in the breath as it rises to fill up your lungs, the exhale, engaging your core center by drawing your navel inward toward your spine. And then when you're complete, just bring your arms down by your side. Relax, take a breath. Still in, in a sitting position, just bring your hands behind you. If you're sitting up on a blanket or a block, you might just wanna re reach back with your fingertips or you can bring palms to the ground, either one's correct. Just reach behind you and feel your shoulders gently pull back. So your heart and chest really open and expand. You're gonna tip your chin up a little bit. So we're creating a mild back bend. We're gonna continue our breathing exercise. So we're gonna inhale, push into the ground with your hands Feel the breath rise, fill up your lungs. And as you exhale, we're still drawing belly button in towards spine. So feel that connection. Start a new breath, still pressing down into the ground for the energy in your arms. Breath rising, filling up your lungs, that nice expansiveness across your chest. And then when you exhale, engaging your abdominal muscles. And if you're able, squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you. So we're just adding a little bit more energy Certainly more awareness to the body in this seated, mild back bend. Take two more breaths. And after your second breath, you can just lower your chin to look forward. Walk your hands toward yourself here, rising up so you're nice and tall in your seat. And again, your arms can just rest by your side or in your lap. Hold for a moment. 
And we're going to take a forward fold. We are going to change our leg posturing. So if your legs were crossed, you're going to uncross your legs, bring the soles of your feet together like so. And then the legs may not come all the way down to the ground, and, and they certainly don't have to come all the way down to the ground. But to support the legs, this is where your pillows or books or blocks can come in handy if you want them. You can just bring them here underneath and your legs can just rest on these props here. And then you want to sit up nice and tall. You just want to hold on to your ankles or shins and sit up as tall as you can. You're going to inhale, get even taller, breath rising, fill up your lungs, exhale, draw belly in and hinge at the hips slightly here, leading with your heart and chin coming forward. If you can see me, you can notice that I didn't go very far at all, just a slight angled upper body. We're gonna do that again. Inhale, extending through spine at this new angle. Exhale, draw belly in for support, hinge forward a tiny bit. All right, so we're just hinging forward. First, working with an extension through the spine, straight as can be. That way we get more sensation perhaps in the inner thighs, a little stretch there. But if you'd like, you can continue to go a little lower, not much, and even lower your chin and round your back if you'd like. And just a reminder with our soft flow practice, you don't have to go too deeply into your poses. They can be modified. Take your time, use your props, and even come to a place where you feel like you're only working maybe at 60% rather, maybe, rather than at 100%. That way we keep stress at bay. Take three more breaths. If your back happens to be rounded, Maybe breathe into your back body, just as we're leaning back a little bit, you are breathing into your lungs in front, expanding through the chest. Now in the forward fold position, maybe you can breathe into your upper back. And then when you're complete, again, just noticing if your back is rounded and if your chin is lowered, just lift your chin to look forward out in front of you a little bit, just lengthening through your neck. Hands on the ground in front of you just to press into the ground to help assist your own body rising back up until you're nice and tall in your seat. Hold for a moment. All right, before we go to our hands and knees, which is what we typically do next, I'm gonna just have you extend your legs out and kind of wide, like a V. It doesn't have to be too wide, just maybe just slightly off of your mat. I'm gonna to turn to face you for this, okay? This is nothing major, just sitting nice and tall, legs extended and out slightly wide like so, okay? Even flex your feet. Okay, just so there's some energy in the legs. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna have you pay attention to a sensation here with legs nice and long and you sitting up nice and tall, we're getting a, a natural hamstring stretch. It's very mild, okay, it's, we're not overdoing it. But I, what I also want you to feel is an inner rotation in the legs, okay? Meaning the legs are gonna feel like they're gonna spin inward and let your feet or toes be your guide here. So if you can see my feet, I'm just gonna turn my legs inward, not very far at all, okay? So maybe your toes are pointing straight up and now just have them turn in and just hold that. Again, not very far at all. That movement should come way up here where the uh, legs connect to the hips. Okay, so it's not just your feet or um, your ankles, but your whole leg just slightly turning in. We're gonna be using the same sensation in a couple of other standing postures. I just want you to feel it here. Okay, come back up to neutral. You can even do an outer spiral if you'd like, just feel the legs turn out for a second, come back up to neutral, and then once again, inward, not very far at all. You don't have to overturn this, just that slight rotation. Come back up to neutral, hold, take a breath, and then you can release and relax. All right, now we're gonna come to hands and knees. So just maneuver your body so you can come to hands and knees. This is where you might wanna use your blanket for a little support. <clears throat> A little softness underneath your knees and your wrists here like this. Cat and cow, you're gonna follow me. We're gonna inhale and just look up or forward. We create a little arch in the back. It's a bit of a back bend like this. We're gonna exhale and round it all out. 
pull your belly button up towards your sp spine. Feel the rounding of your back. This is cat pose. Then inhale to cow pose. You can feel your pelvis tip back. Creates a bit of a back bend as you look forward. Exhale, round it. Cat pose. And just continue doing that at your own pace. A nice undulation of the spine. It's really just that rocking of the pelvis and the movement of the back. Not much else is in motion. Hands are firm on the ground. Arms are straight. And see if you can just keep your arms straight through this process. You can just keep this motion here. But if you'd like, you can add additional movements. If it feels good for you, maybe to maybe circle your hips. Maybe take a moment after that cat and cow movement. Maybe you just want to circle the hips, sit back, or even go out to the side, which is a really nice sensation just to kind of get into the outer hips a little bit. Any extra movements you want to create here? Again, cat and cow circles, sitting back into child's pose, hips shifting side to side, any or all of those. Just finding that mobility in the body. We can add one more thing as an option, just a little twist. We just call this thread the needle. You might just take one arm and just thread it underneath the other arm. It creates a twist in the spine. It opens the hips a little bit. You can hold that for a couple breaths. And then the other side, you can do that as well. These are just some optional movements just to really get into your body. Take three more breaths, completing whatever you're doing. After your third breath, no rush, just come back to a neutral tabletop position and take a breath. And then we're going to crawl off the blanket here. We'll set it to the side. You can certainly use that anytime you'd like. Let's move on to our next pose. So downward facing dog, let's set it up. You're going to step your hands forward out from underneath your shoulders like this. And as you do so, even spread out your fingers really wide so your fingers get a little stretch. And then just press your palms or lean into your palms so your palms kind of flatten here to get a stretch. As you push into the ground, also feel that energy in your arms, straight and strong. Tuck your toes behind you. We're going to inhale to cow pose. A little back bend feeling again. Exhale into cat pose. Hold cat for a second. And then lift your knees off the mat. Lift your hips up into the air. And this will take us to downward facing dog. You might need to adjust your feet a little bit, maybe even your hands. Keep your, beat, your knees slightly bent. That way your hips can continue to float up into the air. At the same time, your hands are pressing firmly into the mat to maintain a nice long spine. This also opens your shoulders. This is a great pose. Two more breaths. Now you're gonna look up or look towards the, your hands a little and start stepping forward with your feet until maybe you're at the center of your mat or until your feet are flat on your mat. And once you're there, you're gonna inhale, slide both hands up the legs, maybe up to your shins, knees, or even your thighs, extending your spine so your back is flat like a table. We're gonna exhale and gently fold again. You don't have to go all the way down. Maybe your hands are just resting on your shins, but you can certainly bend your knees more or round your back more if you can and want to touch your toes. I'm not gonna to be here too much longer. When you're ready, go ahead and shift your weight back towards your heels. Bend your knees and feel like you're gonna sit down into a low chair. Look forward or lift your upper body so you can see forward. Weights in the heels. This should allow you to take your arms out to the side and then drive your heels strongly into the ground to help you straighten your legs. Standing up tall, reach up into the air, stretch, that's it. Exhale, bring your arms out and down by your side, just like this. There we are. Good, a little circle of the shoulders, shake that out. Lots of energy in the body. All right, we're gonna do that one more time. That's our half salute to the sun. We just fold and just come back up, all righty? Guiding us through, 
taking our time. Here we go. Inhale, reach high, lengthening through the sides of your body. As you exhale, spread your wings, arms out to the side, bend your knees, feel like you're sitting back into a chair, weights in your heels, slowly fold. It can be a partial fold. You don't have to touch your toes at all. Then inhale, slide your hands up your legs, maybe to shins, knees, or thighs, extending your spine, feel like you're going forward. Exhale, bent knees, fold again. Again, a partial fold is perfect. Pausing briefly, then shifting your weight back towards heels. Bend your knees, sit down into your low chair, look forward, spread your wings again, drive heels into the floor, inhale, stand up as tall as can be, reach even higher than before, exhale, arms down by your side. Perfect, good. And then roll out your shoulders once again. All right, now we're gonna move into our variation of moving into warrior one, okay? Warrior one pose variation. So again, standing tall, mountain pose, feet forward, shoulders rolled back, arms down by your side. So this is our mountain pose and just follow me. First, just put a slight bend in your knees. Make sure your knees aren't locked and then shift your weight over into your right foot, press strongly, okay? And then you could just kind of tap your left foot back Tap it back until you can just kind of balance on your big toe back there. It doesn't have to be very far at all, okay? And then turn that foot at an angle and just step down there. So now you can see my leg has turned outward, toes are pointing out at an angle, and the right foot still pointing forward with a slight bend in the knee. Place your hands on your hips, okay? And then push down, push your pelvis down and then turn forward, so you're facing forward as best as you can, and then extend your arms up into the air. Hold here for several breaths. So this is our variation of warrior one. And the only thing that's really different about this posture is that the distance between our feet aren't very wide, okay? And the next time we do this, we are gonna do a more wide-legged or wide stance, okay? Now follow me, we're gonna start shifting the weight forward I'm even leaning forward, reaching outward slightly, getting weight into my front foot so I can easily step forward with the left foot and then stand up tall, reach into the sky, exhale, bring your arms down by your side, okay? So a very easy, simple transition, okay? Into that lunging position. Other side, let's put a softness in the knees, put weight into the left foot, feel grounded and connected, and then start to tap, take your time with this, start just tapping the right foot back. See if you can balance back there on your big toe and then turn that foot and just plant your foot into the ground. A natural outer spiral or outward rotation of the leg. Be sure your left knee is slightly bent, toes and knee pointing forward. Place your hands on your hips, push down. That just gives you a little bit more space. You can easily turn to mostly face forward. Then we'll inhale, reach up into the sky, hold here for several breaths. So our variation of warrior one. Couple breaths here. Are we gonna hinge forward slightly? I'm kind of leaning forward so I can get a, some more pressure and weight into the front foot. So I can easily just step the right foot forward, landing it next to the other, stand up tall, reach for the sky, exhale, arms down by your side, all right? There we are. You can even roll out those shoulders again. All right, now let's go through a, 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 a sequence here. Breaking it down, we're gonna inhale to extend the arms into the sky. Exhale, spread your wings, bend your knees, sit back into your imaginary chair. Folding carefully, take your time, maybe touching toes, but you never need to. Inhale, rise up halfway, find that tabletop position. Now on this exhale, bend your knees as much as you can, carefully rounding your back. Enough we can bring both hands down to the ground in front of you and just start walking both feet back to the back end of your mat until you're in a high push-up position like this. It's okay if your hips are a little high. We'll breathe in. Exhale, bend your knees a little, send your hips into the air. This is our return to downward facing dog. Again, you might make a little adjustment with your feet. You might step forward a little bit, even a little wider if you want, okay? Hold for a second. Remember to keep the knees slightly bent, hands pressing into the ground. Here, we're gonna inhale, lift the right foot and extend the right leg back behind you. It doesn't have to lift high at all. Exhale, bend this right knee, bring your knee in 
underneath you towards your chin or chest, shifting your body weight forward until your shoulders are over your wrists. And then set your right foot on the ground. Just your toes are fine. And then set your left knee on the ground, left knee. Okay, that way we can actually pick up the right foot and place it a little higher on the mat. Plant your hand, relift that left knee. Now, if the weight is forward, we need to pull the hips back towards the back end of the mat so there's less weight on the hands. You can easily kind of rise up. I'm going to call these spider's legs. Can you see this? I'm on my on the tips of my fingers, spider's legs. Okay. Now we're going to do something a little different. We're going to turn that left heel, the back foot, so the heel is on the ground, the whole foot's on the ground. Because we're going to the second variation of Warrior One. Okay. Hands are light, so you can bring both hands up to your front thigh. Push into the thigh to help extend your spine at this angle, like you're just going to shoot and launch forward. Take your arms out to the side. Stand up so your torso is perpendicular to the ground. Reach up and then lunge. This is warrior one, second variation. Feel what's happening in the legs, okay? Especially that back leg. It'll, it'll probably feel very different than when we had the feet closer together, okay? Okay, we're gonna inhale here and exhale. Just open to warrior two. Basically, your torso is just turning to face forward, arms extending out to the side, warrior two, just like that. Okay, we're going to do a few more things. First, we're going to straighten the front leg, just like that. Now, if you feel like there's too much distance between the feet, you can actually step them a little closer. I was starting to slip, so I'm just bringing my feet in a little closer. Now, the right foot, we're going to turn the right foot so it's facing the same direction as your left foot, okay? Just like this. Now, this is kind of mimicking what we were doing seated, okay? We were seated with the legs kind of wide. Okay, place hands on hips, push pelvis down, nice and tall. That's, just, that's, all we're, that's all that we're doing here. Nothing's different. Nothing's changing. Just standing with a wide-legged stance. We are gonna take a slight fold here. So you can put a little bend in the knees, inhale, and exhale, just hinge forward. It doesn't have, to, doesn't have to go down low at all. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see this. Okay, maybe at... This angle may be parallel to the ground, but not necessary. A high is fine, okay? That's all we're doing with this, but the hands on the hips, you wanna feel like you're pushing the pelvis down or slightly back. You wanna get that good extension through your torso and then stand up again, nice and tall. All right, we're taking this in reverse. We're taking the arms back out to the side, turn right foot forward, lunge or bend the right knee. We're gonna do a, a windmill. So this backhand, left hand will come up and over, turn to face forward, carefully bend, bring your hands down to the ground, rise up onto your tiptoes behind you. You'll be in a runner's lunge for a second. Press palms firmly into the ground so you can slide the right foot back into plank pose. Then a slight bend of your knees, send hips into the air, downward facing dog. Okay, so that's our little series there. We'll do the other side. When you're ready, inhale, extend left leg up. Doesn't have to lift high, just reach back energetically through your toes. As you exhale, bend this left knee, bring it in underneath you towards your chest, shifting body weight forward until your shoulders are over your wrists for the most part. Set the left set of toes down, set your right knee down. That way you can literally reach back with this left hand and pick up the left foot and place it up higher on your mat. Relift your right knee. If your weight is forward, we're pulling the hips back so you can rise up to fingertips or your spider's legs. Turn right heel to the ground. Press it into the ground so it feels firm on the ground. Walk both hands up to your thigh so you can lift upper body to about this 45 degree angle. Feel like you're shooting forward. Make sure you feel balanced on both feet. Your center of gravity is here at your hip bone, okay? Take both arms out to the side, rise up, reach up, and then lunge, or just bend that left knee a tiny bit more. Notice if there's a stretch sensation in that, kind of in this hip flexor region of the right leg. Inhale again. We're gonna exhale, open to warrior two. Okay, we wanna be sure the left knee is still pointing forward. Check in if, to see if it dipped to the inside of your ankle bone. Okay, when it's stacked 
over the ankle bone or your heel. All right, we're gonna straighten the left leg, shorten the distance between the feet if you need to, turn left foot so it matches right foot, hands on hips, push down, push pelvis down as you rise up nice and tall. Hold that for a moment. And kind of remember this sensation, okay? Straight legs, strong feet, okay, on the ground, long torso, and then a slight fold. First, put a little bend in the knees, hinge forward. Go as far as you want, but here is fine, okay? You don't have to go far at all. You just wanna feel how, they, how your leg muscles really help support you, okay? In a pose, even like this, slight, slight bend in the knees. Legs are engaged, your core here is engaged. All right, let's come back up, nice and tall. Re-extend your arms, turn left foot forward, lunge. Then our big windmill. So the right hand will come up and over, down to the ground carefully, rise up onto tiptoes behind you, that everything is nice and even. Press hands firmly into the mat. That's just a transfer of weight and energy. So you can slide left foot back, plank pose, hold. Slight bend of knees, hips into the sky, down dog. Kind of look forward and start stepping forward until your feet maybe are underneath you at the center of your mat, feet planted into the ground. That way you can inhale now and slide your hands up to your shins, knees, or thighs, extending spine. Exhale, fold, keep that bend in the knees. Weights in the heels, bend your knees, look forward, spread your wings, drive heels into the ground, stand up tall, reach for the sky. Exhale, arms down by your side. Very nice. All right, good. Let's do our first balancing pose. Now you can do this with a chair or a wall or even a block. The first side I'll do, I'll show you with a chair, okay? It's just something so you can just have, have support, okay? So I'm just bringing my chair in. Again, you can just stand by a wall, but you can also do your, uh, your tree pose uh, free if you want to, okay? So you would still wanna be sure your feet are firmly connected to the ground, nice balance there. You just have whatever is next to you, okay? So this will be on your left side, let's say. So your left side is nearest the wall, okay? And start shifting your weight into the left foot, root it down. Nice and tall here. And we'll float the right foot up like this. Swing the knee out to the side and then place the foot on the inside of the standing leg. We're just gonna take the right hand and just place it on your hip for now, okay? This is our variation of tree pose. Some variations of where you might wanna place this foot. My default happens to be my calf. That just feels good for me, for my knee and my hip. You certainly can bring this foot higher up to inner thigh. Okay, and be mindful of how that feels in your knee joint and the hip joint. You can also bring it much lower where your toes actually touch the ground. Main thing here is you wanna feel a sense of balance and a hip opener. And that left, I'm sorry, your right knee is kind of pointing out to the side. You don't have to worry so much about the balance because you've got something to support you. All right, couple more breaths. Go ahead and turn that right knee forward and we'll just place it down next to the other. Let's go ahead and just take both arms up into the air and exhale down by your side. All righty, let me show you how you can do this with a block. You can use your chair or wall. Let me show you how you can use some blocks. I'm gonna bring in a couple of blocks here. Okay, so we're gonna be balancing on the other foot. So right foot pressed into the ground. And so the blocks are on the left side of the body right there. Again, you can use a, a wall or chair or something for balance. I'm just gonna do this freely, okay? So go ahead and start shifting your weight into your right foot, put a little bend in the knees first, and then pick up left foot, swing the knee out to the side, and then you can just place the toes on the block. So this gives the height that you might want or get when you have the foot on the inner leg up high, but you have the blocks to help you balance, okay? And again, just hands on hips. All right, so this is just another option of how you can do tree pose with a little support. So support from the ground or support from a wall, maybe on this side. Very nice, couple more breaths. 
All right, we're going to swing that left knee forward. It's going to plant the foot back down onto the ground. Let's take both arms up into the air. Another nice reach and stretch. Exhale, arms down by your side. All right, shake that out, roll the shoulders. Okay, one more little thing here. And this is what's gonna mimic what we did seated with the legs out in front. I'm just adjusting my mat here. So I'm gonna bring my chair back in. Use your chair or a wall. Okay, so let's say the chair is on your left side. So we're gonna shift the weight into the left foot, okay? Okay, wall on the left side, chair on the left side, Slight bend in the knees, put weight into the left foot, okay? Instead of bringing the knee up, we're actually gonna keep the leg straight and start taking it out sideways like that. Flex the foot, okay? And see if you can stay nice and tall. See how I'm still tall, I'm not bent over, okay? I'm not leaning forward. I'm just seeing if I can get this leg to go outward and just see where it just naturally stops, okay? Before you start tipping out to the side, okay? And then you're gonna do that little inner spiral. Just kind of turn your toes inward, not much, just like what we did seated. There's a lot of work happening in the left hip because you're being supported on that side and hopefully a nice straight line, okay? But we're activating the outer right thigh, flexed foot turned in slightly. Okay, we're gonna bring that back down to the ground, come back to balance. You can just kind of shake that out. Maybe just pedal the feet, bend the knees, even move your hips side to side, okay? So that's it. That's all we're gonna do with that part. We're just getting the body ready for our ultimate pose, which is our half moon pose. So let's just do the other side, okay? So on the right side here, you can just turn around if you're just using a wall. Nice support there. Softness in the knees, put weight into the right foot. Okay, and then we're just gonna start kicking the left leg straight out to the side. Go slowly so you can notice where there's kind of a natural stop. It's like, well, it doesn't, it won't rise anymore, okay? Otherwise you're gonna start to tip over like that. Okay, we're not doing that just yet. We're gonna stay nice and tall, leg out to the side, a lateral lift, thighs engaged, the flexed foot will help with that, and a slight turn of the whole leg inward, just a little, Hold, feel even taller. You even use that, maybe the back of your chair to help you press and lift a little higher through the spine. Okay, let's relax. Let's bring the foot back down. Ah, back on our own two feet. Shake it all out. Okay, let's go through another flow. Just keep the body in motion and then we'll work our way to our half moon position. Again, we'll be using our chair or wall. I'm just gonna set my chair out to the side for a moment. Okay, so back to mountain pose. Let's just flow. Here we go. Inhale, reach into the sky. Exhale, spread your wings, bend your knees. Go slowly as you fold, making your way down towards toes. Maybe feel this in the hamstrings. Inhale, rise up halfway, lengthen spine, long flat back. Exhale, bent knees. Keep bending, keep rounding until you can bring your palms to the ground. Start stepping both feet back into plank pose. Take your time until you're relatively straight from head to heel. Breathe in. Exhale, bend your knees a little, send your hips into the air, downward facing dog. Tiny step forward just to adjust your feet, maybe your hands, settle into the pose and ready for our lunges. Same thing, we're gonna inhale, extend right leg up, reach back energetically, exhale, bend right knee. Bring it in underneath you, towards chin or chest, shifting body weight forward, shoulders over wrist, set right foot down, left knee down if you need to, picking up right foot, placing up a little higher. Relift that knee, hips shift back, rise to your spider's legs. Turn left heel to the ground. We're going to warrior one. Plant that left heel strongly into the ground. Inhale, take arms out to the side or forward and up. Lunge low. Inhale. Exhale, open warrior two. Let's hold warrior two. Okay, let's take this to side angle. So we're just gonna reach forward, reach out over the right leg, angled upper body, and then rotate your arms. So your right hand might be at your knee or thigh, which is perfect. 
If you're a tiny bit lower, maybe your forearm is braced against the right thigh. That too is good. You don't have to go much lower than that. So again, we're getting into this inner thigh and you probably can't feel it, but there's, a, there's a kind of an outer spiral, an outer rotation in this. That's the, what we wanna feel in this. Okay, we're gonna come back up to warrior two, straighten the leg, because we're gonna go to triangle. Okay, again, if you need to put less distance between the feet, you can do that. Arms out to the side, make sure your right foot, your toes are pointing forward, reach out over that right leg, angled upper body, rotate the arms. There we are, okay? So we have some distance between the feet, we have a hamstring stretch, and we're angled, okay? Now this is actually getting us even closer to what half moon pose is. A couple more breaths. You're gonna feel this in your hips perhaps. All right, to come out of the pose first, bend this right knee, a nice lunge. Come back up to warrior two, just to help get a little taller up top. And then our windmill. So the left hand comes up and over, turn, bring hands down to the ground. We're stepping back, plank pose, hold. Bent knees, hips to sky, down dog. Hold for a second, keep the knees nice and soft. Lengthen spine. Then inhale, extend left leg up behind. Bend the knee, bring it in underneath you, shifting your weight so your sh shoulders are over wrist. Toes come to the ground, right knee comes to the ground. Pick up that left foot, place it up a little higher. Relift that right knee, here's our runner's lunge. Pull hips back until there's less weight in the hands so you can come to your spider's legs. Turn right heel to the ground. We're going to warrior one, pressure into that back foot. Left knee stays lunged. Inhale, rising up into the air, reach up towards the sky, hold. Another breath in, then our exhale to warrior two. We'll take our side angle. Reaching out over this right leg, rotate the arms, left arm braced on the inner leg. Good extension through the, both arms. Right hand reaching up, left arm reaching down. Check in with your alignment with the left leg. We want that outer spiral sensation or at least alignment of knee over heel or ankle. Okay, we're gonna come back up to warrior two. Get ready for triangle. So straighten the left leg, shorten the distance between the feet if you need to reach out over left leg again, rotate the arms. So the major difference is just the straight leg now. <clears throat> so we feel this in the hamstring, still, still a good extension of your arms, reaching up and down, even a sensation of maybe your right hip reaching out to the side. This is our triangle pose. All right, to come out, let's first start bending the left knee, a nice lunging sensation to give us leverage to come back up to warrior two. Then our windmill, this backhand comes up and over. Turn, carefully fold, hands down to the ground, rise up onto tiptoes behind you. Press palms into the ground, slide left foot back plank, and then down dog, bend the knees, hips to sky. Hold for a moment. Look at the space between your hands so you can step forward enough to get feet flat on your mat again. So you're in a forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway right there. Exhale, fold again, just partially is fine. Shifting weight into heels, bend your knees, look forward, arms out to the side, standing up tall, reach to the ceiling. Exhale, arms down by your side. Excellent. Alrighty, now let's get into our half moon pose. We're gonna use our chair or a wall, okay? So the first side, I'm just gonna use the high end of the chair. And it, you can use your hand here or your forearm here, okay? Let's set this up, okay? So let's, sit, let's say that the wall or chair or supported prop is on your left side. We're gonna put weight into the left foot, okay? Softness in the knees. Flex the right foot and start taking it out to the side, okay? Now, this, I'm actually too close to this wall. It's actually just bring this back down, okay? And actually step away. So you have like some distance, okay? So you're like this. So you have some distance between you and your wall. Okay, again, 
bent knees, weight into the left foot, flex right foot, take it out to the side. First, feel that nice tall sensation, slight turn of toes inward. Now, we're just gonna lean into that wall or side of the chair here. I'm bending my elbow and I'm actually just resting my forearm on the top of the chair if you're able to do that, or maybe just be your hand. And then this right hand can just be on your hip. So the leg is very active, the one that's lifted, flex foot slightly turned in, balancing. You could take this hand up into the air. Okay, so this is our variation of half moon. Imagine doing this without a prop. Okay, and just balancing on the foot. Okay, we're gonna bring everything back down. So I'm just rising up, foot back down to the ground, arms down by your side, shaking out those shoulders. Okay, so it's a variation. And one thing we did not do, we didn't turn this foot and that's on purpose for this, for this variation, okay? Because for the pose, this foot would have been turned forward, okay, like that. Okay, but we're doing it on purpose just to keep everything facing the same direction initially. Okay, so we're gonna do the other side, but for this one, I'm going to just, use, I'm gonna use the seat of the chair, okay? So I'm gonna test my balance. You can too, okay? So I'm still kind of far away from my prop, all right? Soft knees, weights in the right foot, flex left foot, start taking it out to the side. Okay, slight turn of toes inward. And I'm tipping until I can just catch the seat. There it is, catch the seat of the chair. Hand on hip. So this is just another variation, just using the seat of the chair. Because what you could potentially do is maybe go a little lower, like so, by bending the elbow and that left leg can maybe kick up a little higher until it's about parallel to the ground. There's even a sensation of your torso really facing forward. Just notice if you feel like you're turning to the ground. These are hip openers, okay, as well as leg extensions and balancing. All right, we're gonna come back up to standing, back to mountain pose, find balance on your own two feet, Shake out those shoulders, bend your knees, even wiggle your hips. And that's it. That's what we're doing today. So just some balancing work. Use support. Sometimes we don't feel supported when we're trying to be out there doing our thing. And all we need to do is just ask for a little support. And so we practice that by using props. Sometimes we don't feel like we're very steady and strong in our own balancing positions. That's okay. Just use some support. All right, all right, let's come back to our mountain pose and we'll make our way down to the earth so we can come to the close of our practice. Here we go, let's inhale, reach both arms up into the sky. Exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips, very bent knees. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees enough rounding your back, hands to the ground, and step both feet back. Take your time, plank pose. Let's hold a tiny bit longer, just so we're getting some good upper body work here. About one more breath. And here we're just gonna bring the knees gently to the ground, right there. Sit back briefly in hero, or just really just getting off the hands so we can take a seat. So you can just slide off to the side, and we're gonna get ready to lie down. So go ahead and start bringing in your props that you might want to use for these lying down positions. A blanket to sit on or lie on, maybe some cushioning for your head. Bring in your blocks, okay? Just have those nearby. Okay, we're gonna lie down. We're gonna take our supported bridge pose, lying down with your knees bent, feet flat on the ground like so. A couple of deep breaths here. Grab your blocks or whatever you're using as your prop there, like a couple of books. Breathe in to fill up your lungs. Exhale, press feet into the ground, lifting your hips up off the ground enough, high enough so you can get your blocks or books underneath you and sit. 
right there. All right, we're gonna do several things in our bridge pose. Okay, first we just wanna get the front body to open in a very relaxed way. There's a whole, there's not much effort here, which is really nice. So, cause you can just sit and the most of the body can relax. Some nice deep breaths, breathing into the whole front side of your body. Think about your thighs, your hips, your belly, your chest, and the front part of your shoulders. We're gonna take this into an inverted pose, basically taking the legs up into the air. Now you can do this on, on a set of blocks or, or firm books, but if you don't have anything firm, then you may just wanna lie flat on your back and then we'll extend the legs into the sky, okay? So whenever you're ready, we'll take one leg and then two if you're able, both legs up into the air. Now you could do this one leg at a time if you want, okay? So it's a little bit more leg work. Okay, just like we did seated a long time ago, take the leg slightly wide, turn toes in slightly, okay, just like we did seated, and then turn them outward, just so you can feel that natural sensation of turning the legs out for the outer spiral and slightly in for the inner spiral. A couple of times. And again, you don't have to overdo these rotations, just, just noticeable. Okay, come back to neutral. And then we're gonna cross the legs. Okay, let's bring right leg in front of left, like they're trying to pass each other, okay? Mine don't go very far, but that's enough. And you might feel this in the outer thighs a little bit, outer hips really, okay? So just crossing the legs, hold. Sometimes flexing the feet will keep the legs engaged, okay? Uncross, take them slightly wide, and then cross the other way. So the left leg will cross in front of the right leg as if they're gonna pass each other. Hold. Now you can reach through your heels or the balls of your feet. You can even point your toes here if you want. Maybe feeling that on the outer hips. Come back to center, neutral legs. Let's go back down to the ground. Bend your knees, bring your feet to the ground so everything can relax again. Because that's a lot of energy in the legs, hips, and core to extend the legs up. And then we'll press feet into the ground to lift the blocks or lift your hips so you can remove the blocks and come down to the ground. Soften. Hug both knees into chest. Let's do an inner thigh stretch. Maybe happy baby pose. Take the legs wide, knees stay bent, but if you can, reach from the inside of your legs to grab hold of the soles of your feet, if you can. And then maybe the feet can reach up towards the ceiling, okay? Face the ceiling. The knees are very bent here. And then just press down gently as if you're sending the knees down towards the ground on either side of your body. Again, you don't have to force that movement. If that feels like it's too much, then you may wanna hold on to your shins or ankles. That'll take some of that pressure off the hips, okay? Even if you can reach your feet, but it doesn't feel good, hold on to your shins or ankles, okay? Few more breaths. And we'll finish with a twist. You can add that any time. I'm gonna release the feet, hug the knees into chest one last time, and then start taking knees down to the left side, extend right arm off to the right side. Hold for a few breaths here. Getting a little bit, a little bit of a rotation in the spine. Gets into the hips a little bit here too. A nice relaxing rotation in the body. This is also the opportunity to start coming back to your personal intention, whatever that may have been. Maybe it was themed around our balancing, or maybe you had another intention. When you're ready, just come back up to center. And then take knees down to the other side.
deep breaths. Good opportunity to notice your breathing. Hopefully you're able to take nice, slow, deep breaths. Maybe a couple more. And then when you do feel complete with your rotations, you can come back up to center. Then extend your legs straight out in front of you. Relax the feet, legs and hips. Back just melts down into the ground while your arms relax down by your side. So we're just have moved down into Shavasana. Now, if you need extra support for your body, use your props, maybe your blanket for your head, or maybe you'd like to have your knees bent. You can just bend your knees again, or even just elevate the feet, whatever you'd like to do. And sometimes lying on your back isn't very comfortable. So if it feels better for you today to lie on your side, maybe in a fetal position, do that instead, or even come up to seated. Wherever you are, just close your eyes move into silent meditation. Stay here as long as you'd like. A wonderful way to relax. Keep your body and mind at ease. Even as I end our class together, you're welcome to stay right where you are. You don't have to move at all. You can stay in your Shavasana pose or whatever restorative position that you're in. When it's time to move, rather than moving too quickly, start with breath. Maybe five slow, deep breaths. Feel movement begin to gently return to your body. And then after your fifth breath, move in slow motion so you can roll onto either side of your body, not moving too quickly at all. Briefly pause in this nurturing pose, taking a breath. And then still moving as slowly as can be. Let's rise up to seated using a cushion or a block to sit on if you'd like. And if you are in seated, just feel the nice extension of spine. Take a deep breath in and out. Your arms can just relax down by your side for the moment, hands in your lap or resting on your knees. We'll finish together with one movement. An inhale to extend your arms up into the air, reach high. Then exhale, bring your palms together and down to your heart. And once your hands are at heart center, just take one more breath in and out. Hold in stillness. Good. And as we come to the close of this portion of our journey together, we bow saying, Namaste.